Hey Flight Test friends, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build the Flight Test Mighty Mini T28 Trojan. Now this is an easy build, but I'm gonna tell you, it's a detailed build. If you like building aircraft, this is going to be one of your very, very favorites. If you've ever built a classic flight test aircraft, as you go through the build in the T-28, you're going to notice some very familiar build techniques, but we're also going to be introducing you to some of the more complex methods of adding shape as seen in the Master Series aircraft. One other feature of this kit is symbol mapping. Now symbol mapping is simply the laser etching of instructions on the underside of the part. There are a number of advantages to symbol mapping. First of all, it just helps speed the process up. When the builder understands why parts go together, they are much less reliant on the video. Having a better understanding of how the aircraft goes together actually makes the build experience much, much better. Now the Mighty Mini Series only have an abbreviated version of symbol mapping. As you get into the Master Series aircraft, you'll end up learning about the full-blown version. But for now, this is just to get you started and just to get you familiar with what symbol mapping is all about. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think that covers everything I've got. What do you say we get started? We're gonna to begin today's build by putting the formers into stacks. Let's take a look at the symbols we have here on this former. You'll see here that we've got this symbol right here. This is called the stack symbol. Anytime you see the stack symbol, you know that you're going to be stacking parts on top of one another. With formers, you're going to have a crop mark at the bottom and you're gonna have a crop mark at the top. Whenever you stack the formers together, you'll wanna make sure that the crop mark top and bottom are lined up. Here we've got two groups of markings. We have an F4 and an F4. That tells us that this stack will consist of two parts, one marked F4 and the other marked F4. You'll see here that we've got a line. The line is under the first F4, and on this one, the line is under the second F4. This underline tells us the order in which the parts are stacked. The first one is on top. So the two parts will come together like this. Here we see the no glue symbol. Anytime you see that, you wanna make sure and not add glue to the area indicated. We're gonna be adding glue here on this side and the other side over here. Here we've got the cut symbol. This is something that we will go over a little bit later. Now let's take a look at our next former. If we look at our second former, we'll see that it consists of two parts, an F3 and an F3. It's in the first position, so it's on top. And I'm gonna check my alignment. That looks good on the bottom and the top. So we'll put that over here. As we look at our next part, we'll see that it consists of three parts, an XM, an F1, and an F2. Here's our F2, and our XM goes here on top. Now you'll notice that the XM is slightly smaller than the F1 former. Anytime you run across this, you simply need to center the part inside of the larger part. Once we have all that, let's begin gluing everything up. Again, I wanna make sure that I'm not running glue right down the center, so I'm just gonna apply glue to the sides. Check my crop mark alignment, looks good at the bottom and looks good at the top as well. And glue our F3s together. And now we're gonna glue our F2 to the F1 former. Once that's done, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna apply glue to my wooden former. Center it up and hold it in place while the glue cools down. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're gonna apply a couple pieces of clear tape across this first former. This will help further secure it. Simply going to lay the tape across and wrap it around the former as best I can. 
you'll notice that it's going to bunch up. That's okay. All right, once we've got it taped, we're simply going to trace this X shape using a razor blade. Once we get the center removed, we're going to flip it over and remove the excess tape. Now that all our formers are done, let's begin working on the tail. One thing that I want to point out about the fuselage skins before I begin construction on the tail is you'll notice that I've got designations all running down one side. It's very important that you always have the designations on the same side. If you get a part turned around, it might physically go together, but it's not going to work quite right. So always double check that your parts are turned and oriented correctly. With that, let's get started with the tail. Before we start building the tail section, let's first take a look at the two symbols on here. We see the remove foam symbol. We also have the remove foam symbol here on the other side. Anytime you see that symbol, we're going to be tearing foam away. Here, we've got the peel paper symbol. Anytime we need to add shape to a part, we're first gonna peel the paper away. When the part comes out of the kit, it's going to be folded in half like this. Let's begin by running a bead of glue down the break in the center. It's okay if you've got glue shooting out here in the crack. We're going to be peeling the paper away, and so all that excess glue will be coming out. Once that's had a chance to cool down, let's go ahead and remove the paper. Once we've torn the paper away, let's remove the foam. Using the back side of a razor blade, I'm going to run it down each of the scores. Next, I'm going to break it open, and I'm simply going to tear away the foam there in the middle. Now that we've got the foam torn away, let's add some shape. Before we do that though, I want to take a look at the zones where we're going to add some shape. In order to add the correct shape to the tail section, let's take a look at the former. You'll see here on the former that we've got a lot of roundness from about here to here. The sides are a little bit flatter and then we've got a 90 degree bend right here. In order to identify the zones, what I'm going to do I'm going to make a mark here and here, which is in this area again is where most of the shape is added. I'm going to mark that on the skin. I'm going to roll the former, put a mark here, roll it back to center, roll it here, and then I'm going to draw a line here to the tail. And you'll notice that it's tapering just a little bit. We're also going to be adding some shape right in here. It won't be quite as much as down the center but we still need to add a little bit of shape. We don't have to worry about the corners because the corners are going to be formed by this channel right here. So now that we've identified the zones, let's go ahead and add some shape. In order to add shape, I'm simply going to line up the bottom line with the edge of the table. I'm going to lay it flat, and using my left hand, I'm going to be pulling the part backwards. With my right hand, I'm going to be applying pressure straight down, and you can see as I draw it over the edge of the table that I'm creating a bend. I'm going to do that a few times. And you can see 
that we've got a little bit of shape added right there. We need to add quite a bit more. You can go slow on this step. This is something you will quickly get the feel for. And you'll notice that I'm only adding shape between these two lines. Now one thing I know about the Trojan is that we need a very distinct bend right down the center. I'm going to add a pretty sharp bend between my two fingers here. You'll see a small crop mark right here you can use as reference. What I'm going to do is using my fingertips I'm going to make a very distinct break. I want to be careful though that I'm not creating crinkles in the foam. You can kind of see that I'm folding the part about 90 degrees over the edge of the table. Alright, once I've done that I'm going to work the center just a little bit and you can see I'm slightly twisting the part while applying pressure with my right hand. My shape is looking really good there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this section and this section. You'll notice that I'm not going all the way back. I'm going to just kind of run it right in here. Yeah, I think our shape looks really good. Once we're happy with the shaping, let's go ahead and form a B fold of sorts here at the back. It's not a true B fold because a true B fold will go straight up 90 degrees. But you can see here that I've got it opened up just slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue about four to five inches is all along the edge. And I'm going to hold this about, I'd say, 80 degrees. And it doesn't have to be exact, but you do not want to go to the full 90 degrees. Hold that in place for a full two minutes while the glue has a chance to cool down. Once that's done, you can do the same thing on the other side. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to bring the two edges together. You'll notice up here at the front, the edges are going to come together very nicely. Here at the back, there's going to be a gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small bevel on either side. And this bevel is going to go up about six inches is all. Do the same over on this side. I'm not removing very much material. So now when I bring my edges together, it looks really good from one end all the way to the other. Once we're happy with our test fit, I'm going to take a piece of tape right in the center. I'm going to run it across and I'm going to fold it back right there at the edge. I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way down. I'm going to bring my two edges together. The side that does not have glue will shingle over the side that does have glue, just slightly. I want to make sure that my edges come together exactly. And when I'm happy with my fit, I'm going to push my tape across. I'm going to flip the part around. I want to make sure that both these corners are flush with one another. With the tape holding things in place, we can go ahead and do a test fit with our former. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top, I'm going to line up the crop mark, and I'm going to work my former in place. It feels a little bit too tight, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pressure to the edge of the former and roll it on the tabletop.
you can see that I'm holding it at a slight angle. The reason I'm doing this is there's a taper on the tail section. Let's see if our test fits a little better now. Yeah, that drops right in. Whenever I insert my former, you'll see that I've got one layer of foam sticking out. I want to make sure that's even all the way around. Once I'm happy with my test fit, I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to apply a bead of glue all the way around the inside edge of the tail section. And once that's done, we're going to reinsert the former. One thing that's critical is you want to make sure that the crop mark in the center of the former lines up to the crop mark on the center of the tail section. Check that top and bottom. I'm rolling it around to make sure that I've got one layer of foam sticking out. That looks really good. Let's let that cool down. And once we do that, we're going to talk about the cut symbol on the former. Now that the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to follow the cut symbol instructions. Anytime you see this symbol, we're going to be playing connect the dots using a razor blade once the assembly is done. You want to be very careful when making this cut that you're only applying pressure where the skin meets the former. If you grab your part back here, you're going to create crinkles and dents. Once a scrap's been removed, let's do a test fit with our spline. Before we drop our spline in place, we can see here at the tail we've got the remove foam symbol. Let's go ahead and remove the foam now. Once that's been removed, we're simply going to slide the spline in place and we're going to push it all the way down until it makes contact with the table there in the back. We we'll want to make sure that we can get to this little paper flap. We want to make sure that it's going to be sticking out. All right, once we've done our test fit, let's pull the spline out. And we're going to apply a bead of glue here at the top and a bead of glue on the bottom. You'll want to make sure you have some scrap on standby because it's going to be shooting out the front of the assembly. Turn it up. Push it all the way down until it makes contact with the table. And let's remove the excess glue. It's really important that you get this glue removed. All right, once that's done, we're going to apply a bead of glue where the spline meets the former. We'll do that on both sides and we'll run a bead right down the middle. Let's set this assembly off to the side and we'll begin work on the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. To build the horizontal stabilizer, let's remove the foam wherever it's indicated. I'm first going to go down the score using the back side of my razor blade here and here. Once I've done that, I'm going to tear the foam away. Once that's been done, you'll see here that we've got a new symbol. This is the bevel start, and if you look down here on the other end, we've got the bevel stop symbol. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the score with the back side of my razor blade. I'm going to fold the part over. And on the side with the symbols, I'm going to create a bevel. In order to create a bevel, I'm going to hold my razor blade 45 degrees from the edge of the table and sweep it 45 degrees forward. I'm going to draw it right along the edge of the part and create a bevel all the way across. Once that's been done, we need to strengthen the bevel. We're going to do that by running a bead of glue all the way along the seam. And then using a piece of scrap, we're going to wipe away all of the excess glue. We want to leave this in the open position until the glue's had a chance to cool down. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to take the paper wraps 
and bring them around the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. To do that, I'm gonna run a bead of glue right along the foam, and then I'm gonna run a second bead close to the edge. I'm gonna turn the part straight up and then fold it flat. As I fold it flat, I'm gonna begin moving the part across the table. That way, if any excess glue seeps out, it won't stick to the tabletop. Once that's done, let's do the same thing on the other side. One bead of glue along the foam, and one bead of glue near the edge. That looks good. Once that's done, let's work on our vertical stabilizer. Before we start on our vertical stabilizer, let's take a look at our symbol mapping. We see here that we're going to be removing foam. The arrow tells us it's this little sliver right in the middle, and we see that we've got a bevel start and a bevel stop. Let's begin by using the back side of our razor blade, running down each of the scores, and we're gonna tear away this center piece. Once that's been done, I'm going to fold this over and add a bevel. And you'll notice we've got a gap right here. We're going to drop a barbecue skewer in place. This is going to add some reinforcement. And we need to cut off the excess. So using a razor blade, I'm going to make a mark, mark right here. And I'm going to take and push my razor blade straight down and roll my barbecue skewer back and forth. Once the barbecue skewer has been cut to length, we're going to drop it in place, make sure that the fit's good. Once we're happy with the fit, I'm going to run a bead of glue where the paper meets the foam. You'll notice that I'm doing this on the side that does not have the bevel. Drop that in place, and we'll just let that cool for a few seconds. Then I'm going to run a bead of glue where the bevel meets the barbecue skewer, and then using a piece of scrap, I'm going to wipe away the excess. This is going to add a little bit of reinforcement. We'll leave that in the open position while the glue cools, and once the glue cools, we are done with our vertical stabilizer, and we're ready to do some test fitting. The first piece we're going to be test fitting is a horizontal stabilizer. It's very important that we take this part here at the end and pinch it together. I want to make sure that it is standing up as tall as possible. We get a little bit of extra height by pinching the sides together like that. Once that's been done, you'll see that we've got some foam sticking down. Holding my razor blade flat, I'm gonna cut just under the edge of the paper while holding my razor blade parallel to the table. Once that's done, we should have a nice square channel as we look at it from the side. Next, I'm gonna slide my horizontal stabilizer in place. There are some reference marks on top so you can see that you're centered. And once we're happy with our fit, I'm gonna roll things over and I'm gonna apply a very small bead of glue where the horizontal stabilizer meets the tail. I'm gonna do this on both sides. The reason I'm only gonna use a small amount of glue is that we might need to make an adjustment once we install the main wing. Once a horizontal stabilizer has been glued in place, we're gonna test fit our vertical stabilizer. There are two marks on top of the tail that'll help align the vertical stabilizer. I wanna make sure it's centered, and you'll notice that I've got my tab off to one side. Test fit looks good. I'm gonna run a small bead of glue right down the middle between the crop marks. And I'm gonna drop my vertical stabilizer in place. I'm gonna hold this in place for a full minute and a half while the glue has a chance to cool down. Make sure that you are centered exactly on the crop marks. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I'm gonna apply a bead of glue to the paper tab, and we're gonna fold it over. If you have a piece of scrap on standby, you can use a scrap to make sure it's pushed flush against the vertical stabilizer so you don't get burnt. 
Once that's done, we need to install our push rod housings. To install the push rod housings, I'm simply going to run it through the hole in the former and I'm going to run it back towards a pill shaped slot near the end of the tail. I'm going to hook it using a push rod and I'm going to push it through. You can see that it's sticking out past the pill shape about an eighth of an inch. Once that's done, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue in the cavity right there. We'll let that cool down and then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you give the glue plenty of time to cool down. Once that's done, we're going to cut the push rod housings to length. Once that's cooled down, we're going to cut the push rod housings at about two inches past where they come through the former. Once that's done, we're going to add our next fuselage section. Before we begin working on C4, we first need to apply a bead of glue right down the center. As the glue is cooling down, we can go ahead and remove paper as indicated by the symbol. Before we begin adding shape, Let's take a look at the zones that are going to need the most shaping. I've got the F3 former here at the front. I'm going to line up the crop mark and I'm going to roll it to about there. And I'll roll it back over here, about the same position. And now I'm going to actually roll it all the way down because it looks like we're going to need to add a little bit of shape here as well. Do that on the other side. Add a little bit of extra shape there for the corners. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line straight back here. So these areas here and here, we're going to add the most shape. I'm going to line up the bottom line to the edge of the table, draw it down. And I'm going to line up the second line here and create a little bit of shape there. Flip it around, do the same thing. Now since the sides aren't flat, I am going to add a little bit of shape. We just don't need to do quite as much as we did in the other three areas. See, with just a little bit of pressure, our skin fits really nicely. Bend this in a little bit more. All right, once we're happy with our shape, we're going to line up the crop mark there at the top, and we're going to do something called the glue and wrap method. When I bring these two edges together, I'll notice that I've got a really good fit between my finger and thumb. So that's where I'm going to apply glue to the former, from here, over the center line, over to here. Now I'm only going to run about an inch of glue down this spline. We'll glue the rest of it later. I'm going to line up my crop mark, and you'll notice if you look really closely, this part shingles over this part just slightly. I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes. Don't get in a hurry on this step. You want to make sure that this part is very secure before moving on. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to flip my assembly upside down and I'm going to bend the spline until it is exactly even with the center line. Once it's in the correct position, I'm going to run a bead of glue where the spline meets the skin. Do that on both sides. By tying these two parts together, you will add a whole lot of strength. Give that a full two minutes to cool down. Then we're going to continue to work our way around gluing the skin to the former. Once the splines had a chance to cool down, we're going to apply glue to the F4 former and glue the rest of the skin in place. 
Give this a full two minutes to cool and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just like on the other side, make sure you give yourself at least two minutes for the glue to cool down. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to install our F3 former. Our F3 former will rest right up against the spline. We want to make sure that it's aligned to the crop mark on the skin. And we want to make sure when it's glued in place that an even amount of foam is sticking out all the way around. That looks good. We'll apply a bead of glue here on the front of the spline and all along the inside edge of the fuselage skin. Line up my crop marks and we're going to hold this in place for a full two, two and a half minutes. We want to make sure that this is fit perfectly. Once our F3 former has been glued in place, let's take a look at our C3 skin. Let's begin by adding a bead of glue down the center. Once we've got the center glued, let's tear the paper away as indicated with the symbol mapping. You can pop these two squares out. You'll notice that I'm leaving paper here and here. Go ahead and let that cool all the way down. Then we're going to start adding some shape. If we look at our front former, you'll notice that for the most part it's round. So I'm not going to worry about marking zones. We're simply going to add an even amount of shape all the way across. Let's do that now. I'm not going to press as hard over this area and this area. Alright, once we've added our shape, we're going to go ahead and work on the exhaust detail. So to create the exhaust, using a razor blade, we're going to cut this edge all the way across. You'll notice that these pieces are going to fall out, leaving us something shaped like a fork. Next what I'm going to do is, using my razor blade, I'm going to push down, and you can see how that fork bends in just slightly. I'm going to flip the part upside down. And you'll notice that I, I can flex it just a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this three prong fork and you'll notice that there's a score on one side. I'm going to bend it just slightly and I'm simply going to run one fork inside the other. All right, once that's been done, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to put just a small amount of glue between this square and the skin. And I'm going to press these down where they're even to one another. And I'm going to apply two beads of glue right down the middle and then one on either edge. And once that's done, we've got some really neat exhaust detail. It's a very simple step, but it has a really neat look when it's finished. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And we're going to let things cool down. Once this is done, we're going to go ahead and attach the skin to the F3 former. To install the skin, we're going to line up the crop marks there at the top. And remember, this part will shingle over this part just slightly. I'm going to bring my two edges together. Looks like I'm only going to be able to put a short bead of glue in place, but that's okay. I'm only adding glue to the area where the seam looks good. 
I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes while the glue cools down. And then we're going to do the glue and wrap process all the way around. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to work our way around. Looks like my fit looks good about to here. I'm going to add glue right where the former meets the skin. And then we're going to wrap it and hold it in place for a full two and a half minutes. Once that cools down, we'll continue to work our way around. One thing you'll notice when installing the C3 skin is once you get to this point, you'll notice that it's off center and that's okay. That's by design. Be sure to remove any excess glue using a piece of scrap. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to bring these two edges together using a piece of tape. We're not going to add any glue at this time. That'll be done in a later step. Let's set this assembly off to the side and begin working on our canopy. To build the canopy, go ahead and lay out parts T1 through T5. You'll see that just like on the fuselage, I've got all of the markings on one side. It's critical that you don't have a part flipped around the wrong way. If you do, your canopy just won't come together correctly. We're gonna begin with T5 and we're gonna be working our way towards T1. Let's begin by tearing paper off of each of the parts. Once we've got our paper removed, let's add some shape to T5. Whenever you're adding shape to a part that's got a curve on it, you always want to make sure that you maintain 90 degrees between the part and the table. So as I draw the part down, I'm going to be rotating it just slightly to maintain that 90 degrees. I notice when I look at this part from the side, I've got a little bit of foam sticking out. Using a razor blade, I'm going to remove that excess foam. Once that's been done, I'm going to grab T4 and I'm going to add shape to that. Once I've got my shape added, I'm going to line up the crop marks in the center and bring my two edges together. It is very important that anytime you bring the two parts together, the part with the lower number, T4 in this case, is going to shingle over part T5, just like that. Next, I'm going to add glue to the part with the higher number. I'm going to apply glue from the center mark all the way to one edge. I'm going to add my bend, bring my crop marks together, I'm going to shingle the one part under the other, and I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. After that, I'm simply going to work my way forward.
Now notice on T1, whenever I've added the correct shape to it, I've got foam sticking out. So just like we did on T5, I'm gonna use a razor blade and remove that excess foam. Once that's been done, it, this part can be installed just like the others. Once everything's had a chance to cool down, I want to inspect all my seams to make sure they're together. I notice back here that I've got a little bit of a split, and so when I flex it, you can see that the edges are coming apart. This is kind of a hard area to fix, but I'm gonna show you something that'll really be helpful if you ever have two edges that aren't quite glued together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear off two short pieces of tape and run it right up to the edge of the seam. You can see how I did that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. What we're wanting to do is we wanna get glue down there in the crack, but we don't wanna get any glue on the surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna flex it. I'm gonna fill the crack full of glue. I'm gonna press down and I'm simply gonna tear my tape away. I'm going to bring those two edges together and I'm going to hold this in place until the glue has a chance to cool down. Once you've ensured that all the seams look good, I'm going to take a piece of tape about five to six inches long and I'm going to run it down the edge of each side of the canopy. Once we begin gluing the canopy to the fuselage, it's very easy for hot glue to cause these seams to melt right along the edge, and that is a real pain to deal with once everything is glued in place. All right, once we've got our tape in place, we're gonna add a bevel all the way around the edge of the canopy. So starting up here, I'm gonna be cutting a very steep bevel from one end to the other. I'm keeping my razor blade near the paper on this side. And as I work my way back, you can see that my razor blade is starting to flatten out. As I begin to work my way forward, you can see that I'm increasing the angle of that bevel. As I get to the front, my bevel is gonna shallow out just a bit. Make sure all my scrap is removed. Once that's been done, I'm gonna bring my fuselage over. And if we look at our fuselage, we're gonna see that we've got a small crop mark here and a small crop mark here. These two marks represent the area where the canopy will be installed. I'm gonna line up the crop mark on my canopy to that front mark, and I'm slightly squeezing the sides of my canopy, and I'm bringing them together until they make contact with the fuselage. Once that's been done, using a razor blade, I'm gonna make a very small score on the fuselage. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pull my canopy away, and you should be able to see a mark on either side. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a bead of glue just inside the line. Put a small bead of glue right there on the crop mark, and one in the back as well. Bring my two edges together, line up the front crop mark, and the back crop mark. I'm squeeze my edges together until they make contact with the fuselage, and I'm gonna hold this in place while the glue cools down. So it looks like on this side, my seam popped loose. It's a little bit tricky to get glue up inside there, so what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did on the canopy. 
a couple minutes ago. I'm going to apply a piece of tape right along that score that I made. And I'm going to run the nozzle of my glue gun just inside of that line that we created with the razor blade. Push it down until it makes contact and we're going to peel away the tape. Give that a couple minutes to cool down and then you can check the other side. Okay, our other side looks good. Once that's been done, let's add a couple flaps up here on the nose. Here I've got a couple rectangles. If you look very closely, you'll notice that one of the edges has a slight curve to it. Let's remove the paper from both of them. And we're going to add just a little bit of shape. This is my curved edge, so it's going to be pointing forward. What we're going to do is we're simply going to match the contour of the nose and we're going to push it in place. You'll notice that the flap is in the open position there at the back. To glue this in place, we're simply going to run a bead of glue along the edge of the foam there in the front. And then we're going to run a bead of glue up on the corner there in the back. Once that's done, I'm going to make sure that we've got the curved edge going forward and we're going to push that in place. Once that cools down, we we'll do the same thing on the other side. Once that's been done, let's work on our battery box. To build our battery box, let's go down each of the scores with the back side of a razor blade. If we look at our symbol mapping, we see that we need to remove each of these pieces. Pop this center section out. And it looks like we need to do an A-fold. So if you remember on an A-fold, the side plates are above the bottom plate. Bring those up and we'll hold that in place while the glue cools down. If you take a look at our battery box, you can see here in the rear everything is squared off. But if you look up here at the front, you can see that we've got a little bit of a wonky angle. And that is done by design. We want to make sure that we have the correct thrust angle to ensure the aircraft flies as good as it possibly can. So to orient this correctly, you see the cutout here at the bottom. The cutout at the bottom goes near the double cutout there on the bottom of the former. We're simply going to drop this in place for a test fit. And once we're happy with our test fit, we're going to pull it out and I'm going to run a bead of glue right inside. Drop our battery box back in. And then I'm also going to run a bead of glue where the former meets the battery box. Give that a chance to cool down, then we're going to construct our optional landing gear. To build our front landing gear, you'll need these four small wooden parts. We're first going to glue this L-shaped piece just like this. And you'll see that the short leg of the L is near the tab. To glue my wood, I'm going to use some CA. And I'm going to run a small bead right here. And I'm going to hit it with some activator. And I'm going to drop this little piece in. All right, once that's been done, I'm going to put this other block up at the opposite corner. And I'm just going to position it right now because I want you to be able to see what we're wanting to do. You can see that we've got an L-shaped channel created by the two pieces of wood. So I'm going to drop some glue on up at the corner, hit it with my activator, and I'm going to drop that block back in place. We'll let that cure just for a minute, and then we're going to bend our wire. All right, to bend our landing gear, we're going to make two bends in our landing gear wire. I'm going to put one bend right here and one bend right here. We're going to make one bend up and one bend down. Let's 
just make sure that that lines up to our slot. I think we'll be able to live with that. It's a little tight, but that's just fine. Next thing we want to do is we want to make a bend two and a half inches from our last bend. So there's one inch, two inch, two and a half. I'm going to take and bend this 90 degrees sideways. And I'm going to cut the excess wire off approximately an inch or just a little over. We can make our final trim once we get our wheel installed. All right, once that's been done, we're going to push our wire down in there. Use my needle nose pliers to help me get that pushed in a little better. All right, that looks good. Next, I'm going to apply some CA to both parts a little block and then the L-shaped part. I'm going to hit it with some activator and I'm going to drop my other side plate in and again you see that the tab is facing forward. We're going to let that cure for a minute then we're going to install our block onto our battery box. Now that the glue's had a chance to cool I'm going to drop the two tabs into the two slots there on the X mount. All right, my fit looks good there. I want to make sure it's centered and squared up. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to apply glue to the wooden portion of the former. Hit it with activator. As the CA glue is curing, I'm going to add a whole bunch of hot glue where the block meets the battery box and the foam portion of this former. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, let's remove the masking tape up here at the nose. And we're going to run our battery box through the F3 former. I'm going to flip the assembly over because I want to make sure that this skin goes over our front former here. It's a little bit tricky to do. go got it pushed in I'm gonna flip it upside down if you look here at the back you'll see that my battery box is sticking through the former about a sixteenth of an inch I want to make sure that there is an even amount of material sticking through all the way around so I'm making some little tiny adjustments and now it looks really good I've got about a sixteenth of an inch sticking out and it looks even on this side, this side, and the other side. Once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to run a bead of glue where the battery box meets the former. I'm going to let that fully cool down before moving on. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I want to focus my attention on this crop mark and the crop mark here at the top of the former. I want to make sure those two are lined up exactly. If you look at the former, you'll notice that it is not sticking out of the nose of the aircraft evenly, and that's okay. This is the thrust angle that I was referring to. If it looks completely cattywampus, it's probably right. So now that I've lined up my crop mark, I'm simply going to run a bead of glue where the former meets the skin. Using a piece of scrap, I'm going to remove the excess, and I'm going to push the skin against the former, making sure that the crop marks are lined up. I'm going to hold this in place while the glue cools before I glue the rest of the skin to the former. If you've got tape sticking up, you can always use a barbecue skewer to kind of push it back. Again, I'm going to run a bead of glue where the former meets the skin. And I'm going to pull it around. Go ahead and remove any excess glue with a piece of scrap. And I'm going to hold that in place while the glue cools. It's 
Looks like I got a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to grab a piece of tape real quickly and pull these two edges together. We'll let that cool down, then we're going to add C2 to the nose. For section C2, let's add a little bit of glue right here in the middle, lay it flat, and we're going to remove the paper. And since we got a little bit of a curve, I'm going to add just a very, very, very small bevel here at the back. You can see I'm not going in very deep. All right. Once I got the bevel made, I'm going to just add some shape. It doesn't take a whole lot when you've got a skinny part like this. Once we've got our shape, I'm going to line up the center mark. And using my finger and thumb, I'm going to mark the area where the seam looks good. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue right here and line up the crop mark. The part labeled C2 is overlapping the part labeled C3 just slightly. Give that a full two minutes to cool down before gluing and wrapping the other sides. Using the glue and wrap method, we're going to continue to work our way around till we get to the bottom seam. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to switch gears and work on the wings. In order to build the wing assembly, let's first pull all the parts labeled G1 through G4. We see here that this stack is going to consist of one, two, three, four components. We see here that we've got the line underneath the first position that tells us that this part is going to be on top. And if we look over here, this one goes underneath then G3, and then G4. If we look at G4, we're going to see the letter M after the stack symbol. Anytime you see the letter M, we're going to flip the part upside down. And the reason we do that is we see that we've got some special instructions right up here. So we want to make sure that whenever we glue everything together that those instructions aren't covered. So let's go ahead and put all our parts in order. So we're going to stack these two together this one and then this part will be flipped over upside down. Okay, so that's how our stack's going to go. And one thing I do want to point out is that we do see a cut symbol. So this part and this part will be cut away once the assembly is glued together. I'm going to go ahead and glue this part to G1. Make sure I don't get glue in between the dashed lines. So we've got the first two pieces of our stack together. We can go ahead and do the third. Forgot to pull this part out. Let's go ahead and stack these. All right, before we do the next one, I am going to go ahead and cut this part out. Once that's done, we can glue the next piece in our stack into place. And you'll notice that I did not put any glue between the lines. If I flip this over, you'll see that there is a no glue indicator. Drop this in place. And we're going to hold things down and let it cool. Once it's cooled down, tear away our block here. 
and now we can move on to our main wings. As we take a look at our wing assemblies, let's take a look at the symbol mapping before we start working. We'll see here that we've got a bevel start and a bevel stop. We have that on both sides of the score, meaning we're going to be adding a bevel on this side and a bevel on this side. Here on the aileron, we see a bevel start and a bevel stop, so we'll just be adding a single bevel on the side with the markings. We see here in the middle, we have the peel paper symbol. Let's go ahead and do that now. Once we've peeled the paper where indicated, I'm going to break it open. I'm going to add a bevel in between the two symbols. I'm going to add a bead of glue to reinforce our aileron hinge. Once I've added glue, I'll wipe away the excess like we did before, and I'm going to leave it in the open position while the glue cools down. Let's do the same thing on the other wing, then we'll go back and add shape to both wings. Now that the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to add an airfoil to the front two-thirds of the wing. You can see each time I draw down, I move my hand out towards the edge of the wing. I'm going to continue to work my way back and forth until I get the airfoil shape I want. You can see that I'm pretty tall on my airfoil shape. I'd rather have it too tall than too short. It makes it much, much easier to mash it down if it's too tall. Now if that's done, let's do the same thing on the other wing. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to go ahead and glue the two halves together. To glue the two halves together, I'm simply going to apply a bead of glue here on one edge, and I'm going to bring the two parts together. Hold this in place for about two minutes while the glue cools, and we're going to add our accessory box. Before we install our accessory box, using a razor blade, I'm going to cut away here on the dotted lines. Also, let's go ahead and pop out these circles. All right, once that's been done, we're going to flip the assembly upside down where we have G1 facing upward, and you're going to see a series of crop marks. This is going to help us align our box. All right, that looks good. I'm going to glue one side, and then I'm going to glue the other apply a bead of glue right along the edge. Make sure I'm lined up here at the rear correctly. And I'm going to hold that in place for a couple minutes while the glue cools. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. You can see here, I'm able to move the wing and make small adjustments. I'm actually going to slide the wing out just a little bit. This will give me room to put a bead of glue in and then I'm going to rotate the wing in until the crop mark is lined up with the edge of my accessory box. Once a box has had a chance to cool down, 
we're going to slide our wooden spar into place. The wooden spar is going to be passing through this hole on both sides of the accessory box. When I slide my spar in, it's going to stop right here at this small crop mark towards the edge of the wing. All right, once I've got that centered and lined up to the mark, I'm going to push my spar down until it makes contact with the lower wing skin, and I'm gonna apply a bead of glue. I wanna make sure when I apply glue that I'm doing it between the spar and the leading edge of the wing. Give the glue plenty of time to cool down, and then you can do the same thing on the other side. Once the glue's cooled down, we're gonna install our foam spar, do a quick test fit, push it up against the accessory box, push it up against the wooden spar, and we're gonna run it out to the wing tip here. I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue on the box, on the back side of the spar, and I'm gonna draw a line from the box to the wing tip. We'll push our foam spar in place, and we're gonna hold it in place while the glue cools. I am gonna cut off the excess using a razor blade. Once that cools down, do the same on the other side. Now that the spars are in place, we're gonna install our servos. If you look here, I've got a four-way arm and then I've got a single arm. And in some kits, you can see that the single arm is a little bit on the flimsy side. If that's the case, you can cut down the four-way servo arm and turn it into a single. Just takes a minute to do and it's much, much stronger than the single servo arm. If you take a look at my servos, I've already installed the arms. One's pointing one way and one's pointing the other. I'm gonna take my first servo and I'm gonna push it in from the top where the servo arm is pointing straight down. Before I drop it in, I'm gonna rotate it all the way back so it lays flat. Once I do that, I'm gonna run a bead of glue where the servo meets the lower wing skin. I'm gonna hold this in place for a full two minutes. I wanna make sure the glue has plenty of time to cool. Once this is done, do the same thing on the other side. Once the servos have been glued in place, I'm gonna add a Y harness. Do that, I'm gonna tie a single knot and double check that my connections are right. Yellow to yellow, brown to brown, and we'll pull that tight. That'll keep them from coming apart. You can also tape them together if you like. Do the same on this side. Check my colors and pulling it tight. I'll run through the small hole now to keep it out of the way. All right, once that's been done, I'm gonna grab two more servos I'm gonna bring them together like this. I want my gears pointing towards the air brake. I'll run the wires through the large hole. And we're gonna drop them in just like that. Add a little glue there in the cavity on either side. And I'm gonna flip it upside down. And we'll add a little bit more glue where the servo meets the accessory box. And take both the wires and run them through the small hole. Now that we've got the servos installed, I'm gonna show you how to install the rear portion of the optional landing gear. To build our landing gear, we need to make a couple bends to the landing gear wire. I'm gonna make a mark about right here, and we're gonna bend it straight back, and it's gonna come through that hole. 
And from there, we're going to make a bend straight down. Let's make our first bend. It's going to go a little past 90. And once we get that bend, we need to bend our wire straight down. I run my wire through the hole. And now we need to secure the wire to the wood. When I put my zip ties on, you'll see that I've got the locking portion of my zip tie towards the inside of the L. I want to do that on all three zip ties. Once that's been done, I'm going to trim my zip ties. Hey, there's where my magnets went. I'm going to set those off to the side. We're going to need these here pretty soon. Alright, once that's been zip tied in place, I'm going to add a bead of glue. Further secure the wire to the wood. Next, I'm going to run the wire through the small hole in the wing. Oops. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue the wood to the lower wing skin just like that. I'm going to hold that in place for a full two minutes while the glue cools. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once that's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to move my wires over just a little bit where they're not on top of the landing gear assembly. I'm going to gently fold back the upper wing skin. You might need to do a little bit of trimming if you don't get your accessory box exactly centered. But this looks good. Happy with that fit, so I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to apply a bead of glue here, one across the spar. I'm going to go ahead and add some glue here on the landing gear assembly and then finally I'm going to add a bead of glue along the trailing edge on the lower wing skin. I'm going to fold my upper wing skin back and I'm going to hold this in place for a full two and a half minutes while the glue cools. And I'm going to run a bead of glue where the upper wing skin meets the accessory box. That'll keep the upper wing skin in place. Give that plenty of time to cool down before doing the other side. Got a little bit of extra glue up here. There we go. Once the glue's had a chance to cool, we're going to test fit the wing assembly onto our fuselage. To do our test fit, we're going to run the push rod housings through the two holes in the back of the accessory box. 
Once we get the push rod housings run through, we're going to push the wing all the way back until it makes contact with the tail section. You'll notice that I'm keeping the center line lined up and then we need to push the wing closed up here in the front. Now we're running into a little bit of interference. So if you remember, our battery box sticks out about a sixteenth of an inch. We're going to need to do just a little bit of trimming so that the wing assembly will push straight in. I'm going to remove a little bit of material that's sticking out right here. And once I've done that, I'm also going to shave just a little bit off of the box here in the front. Shaving down both areas will give us all the clearance we need. Now that we've done some trimming, let's do another test fit. I'll flip the assembly over. And you can see that our wing snugs up nicely against the fuselage. So that seemed to work okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pry the front up just a little bit. And I'm going to apply a bead of glue here at the rear. I'm going to add a bead of glue here on the side, about an inch wide. I'm going to go all the way across the center and then run it about an inch down the other side. One other thing I want to do, I almost forgot, is I want to run a bead of glue on the spline. This makes contact with the top of the accessory box. All right, I'm going to line up the center mark and gently press down. Looks like I got a little excess glue. I'm going to remove that. Now with my left hand, you'll notice that I'm right in line with one of the spars. I want to make sure that I'm applying pressure there so I don't create a crinkle in the tail section. Make sure the glue has had plenty of time to cool down before gluing the rest of the wing in place. Once the back of the wing has had a chance to cool down, I'm going to add a heavy bead of glue between the accessory box and the former. Once I've applied a bead of glue between the accessory box and the former, I'm going to pinch the wing up against the fuselage. I'm going to roll the assembly over so that you can see that my fingers are adding pressure where there's a former. You want to make sure that you have that support, otherwise you'll create dents, increases in your fuselage. Once that's had a chance to cool down, we're going to run a bead of glue between the upper wing skin and the fuselage. Do the same thing on the other side. I got a little bit carried away. I'm going to remove some of the excess with some scrap. I'll hold a little bit of pressure here at the leading edge. Again, notice where my thumbs are. They're right on top of a former. Once the glue's had a chance to cool down, we're going to bend our rear landing gear wires. I've made a little black mark an inch and a half from where the wire comes out of the wing. Grab it with pliers and bend it over 90 degrees. I'm going to cut it off about an inch or a little more past the bend. I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. I need to double check my measurement. I can't see where I marked there. Make my bend. Cut it about an inch. All right, once that's been done, let's go ahead and add our push rods for our elevator and our rudder. To do my push rods, you can see that I've run my Z bend through the innermost hole of the single servo arm. It's very important that you run it to the inside hole. If you run it to the outside hole, the plane will be extremely spastic. I'm going to run the push rod all the way through the housing. And I'm going to connect the servo arm to the servo. Do the same on the other side. Now, 
Once I got the servo arms connected to the servo, I'm gonna go ahead and screw them down to secure them. To finish setting up your servos, check out the second half of the servo setup video located in this playlist. To install the landing gear, I'm simply going to run the wheel over the wire and I'm going to install a wheel stop. I'll leave a small gap between the stop and the wheel itself, snug it down and then we can just cut off the excess. I'm going to put the other large wheel here in the back. Leave a small gap and snug that down. Be careful when you're cutting your wire that shoots off in a safe direction. And we'll do the same thing in the front. Once our wheels are installed, let's go ahead and add a piece of Velcro inside of our battery box. If you're going to be running an 850 three cell battery, you're going to be able to stand it vertically. So what I like to do is I like to run a piece of Velcro right inside here. All right, once we've got our Velcro in, let's go ahead and work on our accessory cover door. To build the accessory cover, Using the back side of a razor blade, let's go down each of the scores and remove foam wherever it's indicated. Once we've got the foam removed, I'm going to go ahead and peel the paper off. Next. I'm going to add a bead of glue right along the edge of the foam and then I'm going to add a second bead of glue right along the edge of the paper and I'm going to fold this over. When I fold it all the way over, I'm going to drag it across the tabletop just in case any excess glue comes out. We don't want it to stick to the tabletop. Let's do the same on the other side. We're going to bead of glue along the foam, second bead of glue near the edge, fold it up all the way over and push it across the tabletop. Do the same on the other two paper tabs. Had to go to a table edge for this because of that step down. And we'll do the same on the other. Once we got our paper tabs folded around, let's add the magnets. I've got four magnets. I'm going to break them in stacks of two. And I'm going to fill one of the cavities with glue. When I drop my magnets in, I want to make sure that one magnet is just above. Do the same on the other side. And we're going to drop that in as well. Next I'm going to put an X on both of the magnets. Whenever we glue these two magnets in place, the X are going to help us keep the polarity straight. Now using a piece of scrap, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue and I'm going to glue this piece of scrap off to one side. I'm going to cut it about a quarter inch away from the edge of the accessory cover and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue here and apply a second piece of scrap. You'll see that I'm leaving a space on either side of the knockout that's about an eighth inch wide. I'm going to let that cool down then we're going to do a test fit. Here in the front I'm going to drop my tabs underneath this layer. 
my tabs are making contact with a wooden block. So I'm going to cut away a little bit of material so that they'll go in without any interference. It looks like my accessory door is just a little bit too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my razor blade perfectly straight up and down and I'm going to remove a little bit of foam. Do that on the other side as well. We'll see if opening that up made it wide enough. Still just a little bit too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in just a little bit and remove a little material from both sides. Okay, our fit looks good. Push my wires up in here, kind of out of the way, just a little bit. Once that's done, we need to glue these magnets that are sticking up in place. You can see that I'm off here just a little bit in the back. That's no problem. I'm simply going to remove a little bit of material so I have a little bit better fit between the upper and the lower magnet. I want to make sure they're lined up to one another. So it needs to come out just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this magnet off and I'm going to glue the X down. Now I want to make sure that it's flush with the top of the foam here. Add some glue. And I'm going to drop this magnet in place. I'm going to be careful not to get burned here. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. While this is cooling down, set your aircraft off to the side. Let's go ahead and add a pull tab to our accessory door. To build a pull tab for your accessory cover, we're going to take a piece of clear tape and we're going to fold it over just like this. There's about a quarter inch between this edge and this edge. Next, I'm going to make a cut and I'm going to make a second cut. And you can see that my lines aren't quite parallel. It's a little bit narrower up here at the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my tape right here between my magnets. I'm going to put a small amount of glue right here on the edge and I'm going to take it and fold it straight up. And when I fold it up I'm going to drag it across the tabletop so my part isn't glued to the table. As that's cooling down let's do a quick test fit. I'm going to push this in up here at the front and you can see here at the back that my door is just a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove a little bit of material up here at the front. My notch probably needs to go a little bit deeper. Let's try this again. Now our fit looks really good. I'm a little bit tight right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my razor blade right down the edge of my door. And I'm going to tear away a little bit of material here. Right, now our fit looks good. Now we got a few more details we're going to add to the nose, then we're going to get our engine installed. To build the air intake, we're going to take the back side of a razor blade, run it right down either of these scores, and we're going to tear away the foam. Now 
Next, we need to remove the paper. Next, we're gonna wrap the paper around the edge of the foam. Run a single bead of glue and fold it up. You can see that I'm dragging across the table just to make sure it doesn't stick to the tabletop. Do the same on the other side. And we're going to repeat this on the other two tabs as well. Alright, next what we're going to do is we're going to make a slight bend there in the middle. Once that's been done, let's make a cut between this line and this line. Once we make the cut, we're going to push down just slightly. Next, using my razor blade, I want to remove a little bit of material. You can see that I'm coming in at an angle. I'm going to do that on both sides. Once we've got our material removed, I'm simply going to take and drop our intake into the slot. All right, that looks good. Add a bead of glue here. And reinsert. Hold that in place while the glue cools down. Once that's cooled down, we're going to add another intake on the underside. We're going to do the same thing on this intake. Let's start by running the back side of our razor blade down the scores. I'm going to tear the foam away. Remove the paper. And let's fold up the paper tabs. Do the same thing on this part. All right, well, those are cooling down. If you look at our aircraft off on one side, you see these two lines. We're going to make a cut at the back. We're going to connect these two lines and we're going to push in. Once we do that, we're going to take the larger part, we're going to make a small bend here at the back, and we're going to push that in and push that down. In order to make the fit just a little bit better, I'm going to add a little bit of shape. Gives a little bit of roundness so it'll fit just a little bit better. All right, I'm going to run a bead of glue right on the edge of the foam. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on the back as well. Almost forgot to do that. Looks like I got a little bit of excess glue. I'm going to wipe this away and I'm going to push this down. I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes. I want to make sure it doesn't pop loose. I want to glue this paper in place to kind of create a tapered intake. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. I'm going to pull that over. And using a razor blade, I'm going to cut it down to where it tapers kind of into nothing. And we'll do the same over here on this side. 
I'm going to let that cool down before I cut this side. Once that's been glued in place, I'm going to take our other small block and add just a little bit of shape to it. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky. We need to remove some material all the way across. So you can see from the side, it's kind of got a wedge shape. We're going to glue this right in place here, and it kind of looks like a little open flap when it's done. Once that's done, let's go ahead and remove the tape from the aircraft. Once you get the tape removed, go ahead and check out the motor install section in our playlist. We only have a couple steps left. We're getting close. To set up the receiver and trim everything out, check out the transmitter and receiver setup video located in the playlist. Once that's done, let's go ahead and glue the horizontal stabilizer in place and then add our prop. Before we glue the horizontal stabilizer in place, take a look at it from the back of the aircraft. Make sure that it is exactly parallel to the wings. Once you're happy with the position, you can add a little bit more glue here at the top. Give that a chance to cool down. Once that's done, we just need to install the prop and our aircraft is done. When installing your prop, make sure that you are installing a counterclockwise prop. Now that your prop's installed, your aircraft is done. There's only one thing left to do. That's right, it's time to fly.